Hey YouTubers, it's Vintage Vinny and I have a thrift store, eBay, and antique store haul to share with you all today. I do apologize if I took down the previous video. I had a technical difficulty, my webcam was being glitchy, and I don't think it was the webcam itself. I think my computer just needed to update and the software was acting weird. So I'm back again filming this for you all today. Before I get into the haul video, I would like to shout out a couple of people and I'm going to leave their links down below so you can check them out. First person I'd like to shout out is Krista over at Retronelli Vintage on Instagram. She sells vintage items and even newer items sometimes, and her prices are pretty darn good. So I have bought a few things from her before, and even before I moved to the same area as she, I actually um, contacted her and we chatted a little bit when I found out she was in Maryland and uh, asked where she was, and I found out she is a little close. I met her about two weeks ago. We met up after I was done working. I think I had like an eight-hour shift, and I said, you know what, I'm in the area anyway. Why don't we just meet up at BK? And we had lunch, chatted Instagram, vintage, you know, all nine yards, and she uh, brought the stuff that I had bought from her when she was running a 50% off sale on, on her Instagram page. So I got some cool stuff from her for a really good price. I'm going to share that with you all. And also, if you guys follow Real Nifty Vintage, he just recently shouted out Scott from the Curiosity Shop. The Old Curiosity Shop, I think, is uh, his YouTube name. So I, he also is new. He's been doing YouTube for, I think, a couple months now, and he's just about to hit the 100 subscriber mark. I'd like to get him up there in subscribers, too, because he finds some really cool stuff. He likes a lot of the same stuff that I do, and he also sells more than he collects, as far as I know from his videos. He likes the 1920s all the way through the 1960s, a lot of the same stuff that I do, and he is definitely a really cool YouTuber, and I highly recommend checking him out. His link's going to be down below, so please check him out. So without further ado, let's get into this haul video. Alrighty. So need I remind you, everything was 50% off except for one item that I'm going to share with you. The first thing that I want to share with you is a set of Boonton Wear um, Melamine plates. These were originally $3.50 and I got them for $1.75 from Retro Nelly. Next item was originally 6 and I paid 3 I think it's a jewelry box. Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I really, really liked the color and I really, really liked the starburst pattern that's in here too. Alright, next piece is something that I've actually been wanting for quite a while, and I've had, had yet to find it, and uh, Nelly offered it up. This is a, um, I would guess maybe a 50s, 60s um, poinsettia, pine cone, and pine tablecloth. Paid six bucks for it, and I'm really, really excited about it, because at one of the thrift stores in my old area, they would have this on their Christmas tables, like with all their Christmas decor and all their knickknacks, tchotchkes, you name it, and I really, really liked it. So when I saw that Krista was offering it, I decided to snatch it up for six bucks, so I couldn't beat that. The last piece from Krista is this really, really awesome um, cookies canister jar with Bakelite handle and a Bakelite, um, I guess, what do you call that, tab. So when I bought it, I noticed that the handle was a little bit loose. So I decided to screw it in because it has a Phillips head screw in there. And the plastic had gotten really, really old over the years, so it was cracked and broken, and someone actually had hot glued it prior to my possession. So what I did is I took some crazy glue, made sure the handle was in properly, and I stuck the nail, or the screw, into the crazy glue, and then I taped the uh, nail down so that way it would be held in place. And two days later, it's, pardon the pun, stuck like glue. This ain't coming out at all. This was the most expensive item that I bought from her at $10. I'd never seen the cookies canister before, so when she offered it for sale, I jumped on it. So I thought that was cool. Alright, and then I uh, forgot to share this with you all in my last thrift haul. I don't know how I missed it. Again, it's just one of those things that I missed and didn't mean to. So if you follow me on Instagram, I made a, pa a post about how St. Patrick's Day stuff is hard to find. So when I found this really, really neat um, Irish girl for $2 at one of my Goodwills, I couldn't pass her up. And she is marked Lefton Japan on her. And I can't for the life of me figure out what the tune is. I'm going to 
wind it a little bit and then let you guys hear. No cracks or chips on the figurine itself, which is really, really cool. And it even has a switch on the back, so if you don't want it constantly playing, all you have to do is uh, flip the switch. So I'm going to flip it over so you guys can hear what it, she has to play. Alright, if you know what that tune is, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I hadn't been thrifting, I think it's been about a week because I worked last Saturday and I've been thankful I've had weekends off, which is fantastic because these next two weeks for me are going to be brutal. I'm going to be up at about 5 o'clock in the morning to get ready so that way I can be at work by 6. So I'll be doing like 6 to 2 for the next week and then I'll be in the back room. Like today I uh, got up at quarter to five, and then I stayed till 2.30, mainly because my uh, one of my co-workers had a bit of a, there was a little bit of a medical emergency, I guess, and I'll just leave it at that, and so, you know, I decided, to, or I told my manager I would take her hours just so there wasn't any filling that needed to be done, and I was going to be there anyway, so, and I can always use the, so, yeah, that's that story. Alrighty, so let's see, what do I have left over from... Alright, so one of the Salvation Armies that are actually the only Salvation Army in town, one week I didn't find hardly anything, but the one thing I did find was actually behind the cash register, and it's this um, squeaker toy bunny. This was a bit more pricey, I, I mean it was still relatively inexpensive, but a little bit up there in price. I paid, excuse me, I paid $2.50 for it. Here's what it says on the bottom. It says, Easter Unlimited for the Broadway Toy Company, made in Korea. I would date this to maybe the 60s or possibly even the 70s. It does still squeak, barely. So I decided to pick that up. I thought that was really cool. And then the next week that I went there, um, you guys know I'm not really into dolls, but if they're interesting or if they're dressed to be from a certain era, I definitely will snatch them if they're in good condition. I picked up this doll, and I also featured her on Instagram. Uh, VinnyMac1995 is my Instagram if you aren't following me there already. I'll link that down below as well. I wish she would focus too. She can be a little creepy, especially with her eyes, but I really, really like the way she was dressed. She kind of reminds me of either a bridesmaid or just somebody who was dressed casually in a 50s fashion. Like the way with her hair, this little, oh god, you guys are going to have to tell me what this is because I'm not exactly sure. And just her dress is very, very retro and I really, really like that about her. Again, another somewhat pricier piece from the Salvation Army. I paid $5 for her. These composition dolls are not worth very much at all. They made thousands and thousands of these things. But if you like the way that they're dressed and they speak to you and they you like the way they look, don't be afraid to pick them up for cheap, even though this one was a little bit more, but it, it's okay. I liked it enough to buy it for the five bucks. And plus, for Salvation Army, it's going to a good cause anyway. Alright, and the next week, or the next time I went thrifting, I didn't find very much. Um, I did take prices off of stuff because I thought, you know, the first video that I did was going to be a breeze, you know, it just upload it to the channel and then I found out that there was a glitch so I do remember what I paid so this was a dollar this is a USA I can't I think it's Bauer according to what Liz Retro said um, it's a watering can planter it is imperfect it does have a chip as you can see right there however I thought it would be really really cool to have as maybe even putting like a spider plant in here or maybe just displaying it in an old garden piece I like it and it was only a dollar it was dirty when I found it, but I cleaned it up real well, and I really, really liked that sky blue. From that same thrift store, not even sure if this is old or not, but I found this uh, polka dot, um, it's either an ashtray or like a change tray. It was only 50 cents. I decided to pick it up because I really, really liked the colors. 
Uh, no chips on the edges, which is pretty surprising to me. I can't wait to use it. From one of the other Goodwills that I go to, I've been picking up old films, and I shouldn't be because I have a whole box that's sitting, like, literally right across from here by my window. So I picked up the 1960 Disney movie Babes in Toyland, starring Tommy Sands and Annette Funicello, who, if you don't know, was the last Musketeer for the Mickey Mouse Club in 1955, handpicked by Walt Disney himself. She had a really, really great career, and unfortunately, she lost her battle with MS... I think it was in, oh goodness, was it 2013, 2014? She was in her early 70s when she passed. But yeah, she left behind a really great legacy, I think. Alright, I guess I'll show you the one thing from eBay too, because that came before I got all this other stuff. So, as you all know, I do like my pinup, and I did censor this because, obviously, I don't want this video getting taken down, or somebody flagging it as inappropriate. So, this is a really, really cool 1954 calendar for the Winnebago Auto Wrecking and Parts Company in Rockford, Illinois. If you don't know who this model is, this is Margie Harrison. She was the second centerfold for Playboy in January of 1954, so this dates it to be pretty accurate. I paid $33 for this. One day I'm going to have this framed and put up in my bedroom. I uh, can't do it here because my mom's not really crazy about the pinup. So, technically Marilyn was the first centerfold sweetheart of the month for Playboy in December of 53, but she was a very well-known person. Actress, sex symbol, you know, just a per socialite, wealthy socialite, I guess you could call her. So, Margie... Um, was born in 1931, and I think she posed for this picture in 53 or 54, maybe, so she was 22, 23. So she was a late bloomer, so she was born, I think, in December of 31, and she passed in 2005, I think, at the age of 73. So this is just a really, really cool piece of pop culture history. Again, it is a little risque, but you know what? I love it nonetheless. Let me get this rolled up again before I show you the other stuff. Alright, I guess we can get into the uh, antique store stuff. So I have my receipt here because I did take um, tags off of everything. So I'm going to tell you guys because most of the stuff that I got was on sale. So the first thing that I picked up was actually right when you walked into your left. There was a showcase and they had like little grab bags. Uh, I did not pay $6. I got this half off. There were six items in here. One of the items was not vintage so I took it out and it's just going to go right to donation. So I paid essentially 50 cents a piece, and the reason that I picked this bag up is for this poodle. I'm not exactly sure of the era, but it does have a stamp on the back. Let's see if I can get it in there for you. It's handwork, um, I think it's pronounced Kunstler Schutz, or Schutz, Kunstler Schutz in West Germany. So this is probably 50s, uh... Late 50s, mid 50s, not exactly sure, somewhere in that era. It's in really good condition. Again, it was only 50 cents. And I think I can get $13 for this little dog here. And it'll be like first class shipping, so it's not going to cost that much. But yeah, I thought that was a really, really good investment. And if you happen to know what these things are, please let me know in the comments so I can give them a proper name when I list them. Oops. These are... God, I can't even tell you what these things are. They have animals in them, and then there's, like, something rattling in there. There's four of them. Let me show you the other one. This one's... So I think we have a reindeer, a wolf, a donkey, and a polar bear, I think? I have no idea what the heck these things are. If you do know, let me know. Um, what's that? 
Alright, this is something I've never ever seen before, so when I saw it for $4.95, I decided to pick it up. This is made by the Spartus Corporation in 1967, that was when it was manufactured. It's a clock, but it also has a lamp built into it. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. Quick. Oops, maybe not. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what. Sorry guys, I unplugged the wrong outlet here. Well, first let me show you that what there's like a hurricane lamp there. It almost looks like the wide-eyed doll pictures from the 60s. And it does work, which is awesome. The switch is on the bottom to turn the lamp on. So as you can see, it works perfectly. Uh, I haven't seen any of these on eBay, or none that are exactly like this. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to ask $39.99 or maybe $35 to $40 in best offer, just to see what happens. I know somebody will really like this. I might describe it as shabby chic because of the pink. So that might... Um, gain some interest, or at least I hope it will. So that was a really, really good pickup, I think. Uh, this place is more of like a co op flea market, antique store kind of a place. You kind of have to wait a few months for stuff to change or for people to bring in newer items, but I think I'm going to hit it up again because sometimes I go in there and I only browse each aisle one time, so I have to go back again to see if there's anything I missed. Sorry, guys, i got to plug my computer back in. I don't want this thing dying on me. All right, so that's that. So that was one of the items that was not on sale. All right, another piece that I purchased is this... Oh gosh, I don't even know how old it is, but it's brand new and sealed. I paid... It was originally $5.95, but I did get it on sale... For, let's see, $4.76. This model will run for about $30 to $35 on eBay. So that's what I'm going to list that for. And it is a factory with loaded silos, and it's an HO scale model. So I thought that was really, really cool. For, let's see, this was also on sale, this uh, really, really cool uh, high C can. So that was $3.19, I think it was originally $3.75. These, I'm sure, are very, very common, but I really, really liked it. And I've got stuff that I'm going to sell that's going to uh, pay this thing right off. I really, really like the graphics. I would date it to maybe the, uh, probably 1960s. I just thought the graphics were super cool. And they don't make it like this anymore. And it has um, rust on the top, and then there's um, can opener marks. So I thought that was really, really cool. All right, four. Let me see what it was here. Sorry, guys. All right, so this was four fifty. This is a uh, 20s or 30s Art Deco... Um, it's not a light fixture, or I guess it could be considered a light fixture because if it hangs up on the wall. I really, really liked the way it looked, and it's cast aluminum, so it's it's not very heavy and it's not very light. It's light, but it's not very heavy. So I think I might charge forty, fifty dollars or best offer and see what it does from there because this is very, very cool and people who are looking to restore older homes like this kind of stuff. Or if you just want to use this for a decoration on the wall, or even put like maybe one of those um, candles through it. That would be a really cool piece, I think. For $0.25 cents a piece, I managed to pick up these uh, new old stock Hallmark invitations. Um, I would date them to the 1960s, 1970s. This one's definitely like late 60s, early 70s. Uh, these two are Christmassy, um, open house, they have that snowman on them, which I have a, uh, pin, like a, 
Hallmark jewelry pin thingy in this with that guy right there. So I got two of those. I'm going to keep one just for the Christmassy sake of it, and then I'm going to sell the other one. There are so many of these out there, but I'm sure somebody would love to have them in their collection. So I think I'm going to do 6 to seven ninety nine, and then media shipping, of course. And I'm going to sell this one too, so that'll pay these right off. And if I sell them these two for $16, that's still making way over than what I spent on all three. So I thought that was a good price. Alright, so one of the... Oh, actually, I'll show you this. This was in the showcase. This was also on sale, 30%. I paid $1.60 for it. It's a... I guess it's a Lucite keychain with a picture of a woman in here. Kind of like a... I don't know, something you'd get done at the studio. I don't know how these were made, but I thought it was really, really cool. In previous videos, I've talked about a jar that I have, like an old salad dressing jar that I picked up at at the uh, one of the antique malls where uh, Treasured Vintage lives. And I thought it would be cool to throw a bunch of old um, small stuff in there. So that's where this is going to go. At one point, I'll pull it out of my bins that are in the garage and I'll share it with you all because it's gotten pretty full over the last few years that I've had it. So that's just going to be a neat little trinket to add to that. I'll show that to you again in close-up. I thought that was really, really cool. All right, one of the last pieces that I picked up at that um, flea markety co-op place is a set of these um, spaghetti tumblers. They're coated in rubber. They didn't have a price on it, so when the uh, really nice uh, worker there took it up there for me, I told her they didn't have a price on it, so they were going to call the dealer up for me. And he quoted eight bucks, and I was kind of like, oh, "Really, you want eight dollars for these five? No, thank you." And then she, <laughs> she saw the face I was making. Which said I kind of lost interest, and then uh, I think he really wanted to sell them just to get rid of them, and then uh, he quoted her six, and I said, no, 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 and then he told her, or she told him that, you know, no, he's not really interested still, and then um, I think he told her, you know, what what's he willing to offer? And I told her I'd give you, or I'd give him a dollar a glass, and he said sold. I think he just wanted them out of there so he didn't have to come in and price them later, which I get. So I think he may have paid less than a buck for all these, but you know what? I love these things, and they do come in different colors. If you guys know what this is called, I know Old Curiosity Shop and Real Nifty Vintage have said what these were, and I know Thrifting 101 has too. For the life of me, I just can't remember, and got to give me a break here, because I've been up since quarter or five this morning, and I'm still up, which is a huge shocker. Woo. And I'm surviving on ginger ale and sugar-free Red Bull, which is, of course, a bad combination for me. So that's two of those. There's five of them, and I'll show you two different colors here. This one's kind of like a gray. I like this one, even though some of the rubber's coming off here. This one's like a green color. And I actually, a few years ago, found this picture at a way and pay place, 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 a way and pay place. So that kind of will go with these. I, I'm thinking, like, I have this really weird vision of having a really old, like, mid-century china cabinet and just putting all of my cool vintage glassware and dishware sets in there just to display it off. I think that would be really, really cool. So I think that's everything that I got at that co-op place. So a total spent of $49. I did get some other stuff that's not vintage, and that's going to be sent off to Amazon, so I'm going to be making well over what I spent. And I only got a few pieces at the uh, flea market that we went to. So let me show you that. First piece is this uh, wind-up chick. It's plastic and feathered. Uh, he was 2 bucks. You wind him up, and it, he doesn't really bop up and down like he should. Oh, well, he kind of did for, there for a little bit. So, yeah, two bucks for that. I didn't think that was too much to ask. And he is stamped Japan on the bottom. I wonder if it'll get it. Yep, it says made in Japan. Oh, snap. Where'd that stuff go? Oh. All right. This is the most... Ex Actually, this was the second most expensive item that I bought. This was $4 on sale, 20%. It is a vinyl rubbery stocking. 
Never seen it before, so I decided to snatch it. It is stamped Japan on the bottom. So I was really, really happy to get that. And then, very vintage Christmas stuff was really, really cheap. A lot of it I was kind of like, eh, it's too 70s for me. Or It had a Japan sticker on it, but I'm trying to be more picky about the Christmas stuff that I pick up because I don't want to just buy something just because it's vintage anymore. So I picked up this guy here. He was on sale again 20%. He was $1.60. He is missing his boots here, but I think I can find those on eBay. Maybe I'll buy a pair of Ken boots and just throw them on him. I really, really liked him, and he's pretty clean and in good shape for his age. So I think that's everything that I wanted to share. Oh, no, one more thing. So these were a dollar a piece, and again, Old Curiosity Shop just found a picture that matches these. I called, I used to call this stuff crinkle glass. I'll, I'll pull both of them out for you so you can see them. I wrap these things way too long. So these are in the frosted blue pattern. Again, they were a dollar a piece. They were in some guy's shed he just had open, and it was kind of a pay-as-you-go, like you just insert money into a wooden box, which I think is a little uh, sketchy nowadays, because you never know who could come in and just take a bunch of stuff. It was mostly junk in there anyway, but you know what? What can you do? I found something good in there. So they made this glass. Actually, I think I called it crinkle glass for a while, and then I started calling it birch glass, because that's what it's basically is. Um, oh, I can't remember. I know Curiosity Shop just mentioned the name of this when he was talking about the picture that he bought, and I can't for the life of me remember it. But I really, really liked it, and they made this in like another, like a deeper blue, like a glacier blue. This is more frosted blue. They made it in a glacier blue. They made it in that really ugly amber color. Sorry, Thrifting 101, not my color type. Or the avocado green. Avocado green, again, I'm not crazy about. But I do have a uh, Indiana Glass Company chip and dip set that is that avocado green, which, you know, it is what it is. I can't find one in blue. But if I do, I'll sell the avocado one. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you all today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Don't forget to follow Retronelli Vintage and hit the subscribe button for Old Curiosity Shop if you want to see more of his videos. And all the links to my show... show. Social media are down below as well, and thank you for watching.